If you think Ethereum 2.0 is just a transition to proof of stake, you'd only be partially right. This is just one of the many different upgrades coming with Ethereum 2.0. These upgrades will bring many things, including greater energy efficiency, higher transactions per second, later clients, and more. In December 2021, Vitalik first tweeted about the ETH 2.0 roadmap, and the developers have been making solid progress on it ever since. Today, I will be explaining the five major upgrades to bring us the future of the blockchain we know and love. I'm Jack, and on Eat the Blocks, we help Web2 developers transition into Web3. Vitalik's ETH 2.0 roadmap has five main upgrades with an easy way to remember them. They are called the Merge, the Surge, the Verge, the Purge, and the Splurge. These are all currently being worked on. Looking at this diagram, we can think of the timeline from going left to right, not top to bottom. Let's take a look at what each upgrade will bring to the table. The upgrade that will be done the soonest is the merge. I know this because almost all of the test nets have already completed the merge successfully, which is great news. This is where Ethereum ditches the proof of work consensus mechanism and merges into the proof of stake mechanism. There is a misconception that the proof of stake will bring lower gas fees or increase its bandwidth. This is not the case. However, switching to proof of stake will reduce Ethereum's energy consumption by more than 99% due to taking away all of the mining from proof of work. Check out this diagram from ethereum.org. If energy per transaction were sized, Bitcoin and ETH1 would be a building. ETH2 would just be a mere screw. The validator nodes will be responsible for reviewing block data and transactions. Nodes are rewarded with ETH for validating blocks. If a node is a bad actor, then it will get punished by losing some or all of its staked ether. If you have 32 ether, you can stake it and become a solo validator node. Most people don't though, and there are other options for you like centralized exchanges and staking pools, shown here. Next on the list, we have the surge. This is the update that will greatly increase scalability on layer two rollups. These solutions like Optimism, Immutable X, Arbitrum, and many more do all of their computations and storage off chain while posting data back to Ethereum. The scalability of these rollups will come from sharding. Sharding is like if you drop the glass plate into lots of different glass shards on the floor. It is the process of splitting a blockchain up into many smaller pieces in an algorithmic way with many pieces overlapping. It is done in a way that will allow someone to verify their own shard and know that they can still trust the rest of the blockchain. The original plan was to do sharding on the entire blockchain, including the EVM, accounts, smart contracts, and data. Now they decided to only shard the data. Therefore, rollups will be able to increase scale. Vitalik and others believe this is the best route as more and more computation will start to get done off the main chain. The steps we see in this timeline can generally be summed up to slowly increasing sharding. At first, the blockchain will be sharded and people will still need to verify the entire chain. This is to ensure that the algorithm is working correctly before going to where we can't return. The last step here is called DAS, or Data Available Sampling, which will allow all clients to easily verify all data is real without having to download the entire blockchain. This is when max scalability will meet max security and give us the best balance on the triangle. Things get a little more complicated with the next upgrade, called The Verge. This upgrade is where Merkle trees get converted into Verkle trees, with a V. Currently, Ethereum stores its entire database inside of Merkle trees. These are hash trees that allow you to quickly find and verify the data you are looking for by comparing the leaf nodes hashes. We are now moving to Verkle trees, which use vector commitments. These allow you to commit to an ordered sequence of values in such a way that it is later possible to open the commitment only at a specific position. This is beneficial because it allows a network to only give you pieces of a block that have been read and written to, along with a vertical proof, which is called a witness. Even without this special witness, the vertical tree is shallower than Merkle trees. This special system allows users to verify the block immediately, without nearly as much memory required. This results in way more everyday users being able to create their own validators. The more people and systems around the world verifying the blockchain, the more democratic the system becomes. Now on to the purge. This upgrade will allow full nodes to not have to store all the historical data on the blockchain, just the last year to dates. Hardware requirements for nodes will decrease and the bandwidth of the network will reduce. 
Basically, we will be eliminating the dead weight of Ethereum, since clients now must download hundreds of gigabytes of data, and soon to be even more after sharding is introduced. Clients usually don't have any need to store all of that data. Don't worry, this data won't be gone. There are plenty of big applications and services that still need to store this data, which is what will keep the history there. For example, rollups, apps with user history, Etherscan, the decentralized portal network, and more. Here are the earliest transactions of the famous DAO token. More than 2,000 days ago, they will stay there. State expiry will also be introduced. If an account or smart contract isn't touched in the last year, it will be placed into history. If you want to access these things stored in the history, then all you need is a Merkle proof generated from your private key to go get it back. David from the Bankless podcast used the game Snake as an analogy to how the normal client's history works. In the game Snake, when your snake gets too long, it will eventually crash and die. The same thing can happen with the blockchain. Therefore, we are using the purge to make sure that the data on the blockchain stays light and can keep going on forever. The Splurge is the last upgrade on the list. This upgrade is more of a miscellaneous one, pretty much including everything that is left out of the last four. There are also some things on this upgrade planned for a lot farther in the future. One cool feature here is account abstraction. This allows smart contract wallets basically to become first class citizens, the highest tier accounts. Today, there is no difference between accounts. However, some protocols take up more gas on the system than others, ones that could easily be done off the chain. An example of this would be multi-sig wallets. Account abstraction would add a second transaction layer for user operation objects that talk to smart contracts, which will in turn allow the more important protocols to get processed faster. Another feature coming from the splurge is PBS, or Proposer Builder Separation. Currently, people who propose a new block to the chain also must create it to gain a reward. This new system would allow people to propose a block and then let separate block creators do an auction-like system to see who would create it. This will simplify the use of Ethereum and make it more accessible to everyday users. It will also allow block creators to focus on one thing and do it more efficiently. So clearly, there are lots of things to be optimistic about for Ethereum's future. Ethereum 2.0 is right around the corner with the merge coming to the mainnet very soon. And I don't know about you, but I'm super excited to see what happens down the road. If you want to learn more about staking with Ethereum 2.0 and even how to create your own staking pool, then check this video out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.